Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the career of Tony Todd. Oh, yeah. You know, after his recent passing, I think it's only fitting. Absolutely. And you sent in just a fantastic article about him, about his career and his legacy. Yeah. And it is incredible when you look at it, just how much he accomplished. Really is. Over 40 years, nearly 250 credits across film, TV, video games. I mean, oh, yeah. this guy was just a powerhouse. Yeah, a force of nature, you could say. Yeah, and, and you know, he's obviously most well known for his horror roles. Of course. But reading this article, I was really struck by how he kind of transcended genre. Yeah. And um, so I think it'll be interesting today to kind of unpack what made Tony Todd so captivating. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great way to put it. Captivating. He really draws you in. He does. And, you know, you can't talk about Tony Todd without talking about Candyman. Right. But there's so much more to him. For sure. So why don't we start off by looking at, you know, where he came from, his background? Yeah, I think that's key. You know, to really appreciate the depth he brought to his roles, we need to go back to his roots. You know, Tony Todd wasn't some overnight sensation. He really honed his craft. He studied at the Eugene O'Neill National Theater Institute and the Trinity Rep Conservatory. Wow, those are... Uh, these are some serious programs. You know, they're known for rigorous training, really focused on building a deep understanding of character, emotional range. It's interesting because you can really see that foundation in his work. Oh, absolutely. Even in the genre films, you can just tell that he had this incredible ability to breathe life into characters, to make them feel real, even when they were well monstrous. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned Candyman, and I think that's a perfect example because I remember reading in the article, there's this quote from him where he talks about creating a backstory for the character. You know, he imagined Candyman as the son of a slave who was brutally murdered for falling in love with a white woman. It's amazing how much depth he brought to that role. It really is. It wasn't just some slasher villain, you know, he gave him this tragic history, this real sense of pain and injustice. It's what made him so terrifying and unforgettable. You know, he wasn't just playing a monster, he was playing a man twisted by tragedy. Yeah, and I think that adds a whole other layer to the character and to the film itself. Absolutely. It makes you think about the themes of the film in a whole new way. It does. And, you know, it's interesting, the article also quotes John Squires of Bloody Disgusting. And he says, Tony was not just an icon, he was a deeply respected member of the horror community who made every movie he was in better. That's a great quote. It is, and I think it speaks volumes, not just about his talent, but also his presence on set within the industry. Right, he clearly had a real impact on the people he worked with. He did, and <laughs> you know, speaking of Candyman, I have to say, revisiting the original film and then seeing him reprise the role in the 2021 sequel, it's really remarkable. It is, it's a testament to the power of that character and to Tony Todd's performance. Yeah, I mean, the character has endured for decades, and Tony Todd is a huge part of that. Oh, absolutely. You know, he brought this gravitas to the role, this sense of both power and vulnerability right. that really resonated with audiences across generations. I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's that combination of power and vulnerability that makes him so compelling. Yeah, he's not just this one-dimensional bad guy. Yeah. You know, there's something more there. Exactly, and you can see that in so many of his roles. You can't, and, and his voice. Oh, that voice. Unforgettable. Chilling and yet somehow soothing at the same time. It is, it's just so unique and, and it really adds to his presence on screen. Absolutely, it's instantly recognizable. You know, you hear that voice and you know, it's Tony Todd. It's true and, and it, it's not just about his physical presence either. Yeah. You know, he had this incredible ability to tap into the psychology of his characters. Yes, to find those nuances that made them more than just villains or monsters. Exactly, and you know, as we said before, he wasn't limited to horror either. Yeah. He made a significant impact on sci-fi as well. Oh yeah, definitely. We'll have to get into that. We will, but first I think we need a break. Sounds good. His roles in Star Trek, you know, particularly as Kern in The Next Generation and Dup Space Nine. Oh yeah? They really let him showcase, I think, a different side of his talent. You know, he brought this real sense of warrior nobility to Kern. Right. But also a vulnerability, especially when he's dealing with the loss of his culture, the complexities of his relationship with Worf. Yeah, and, and you can't talk about Tony Todd in Star Trek without talking about The Visitor. Oh my gosh, yeah. That episode of Deep Space Nine. Incredible. It is incredible, and he plays an older Jake Sisko. Right. Desperately trying to free his father, Benjamin, 
who's trapped in this temporal anomaly. Powerful performance. It is powerful. It's heartbreaking. And there's this one scene. Oh, I know exactly what you're going to say. Where, where Jake is pleading with his father, begging him to let go. Oh, yeah. And you can just see the years of pain and sacrifice etched on Tony Todd's face. It's a master class. It is, it's a master class in conveying raw emotion. And it just goes to show that he could move beyond, you know, genre conventions and deliver these truly powerful, dramatic performances. It's funny you should mention The Visitor, because I remember watching that episode for the first time and being blown away by his performance. Yeah? It's not a horror episode in any way. Right. But it's so intense. It is. It's so emotionally charged. And he just carries the weight of that story on his shoulders. He does. You really believe that he's a man who has spent decades trying to save his father. Yeah. And you feel that desperation. Absolutely. And it's a testament to his range as an actor. It is. That he could go so seamlessly from playing, you know, these iconic horror villains to embodying such complex and emotionally resonant characters in a completely different genre. And that versatility extended beyond live action. I mean, he had a very prolific career in voice acting as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When I think of his voice work, yeah. I immediately go to his role as Venom. Oh, of course. In the Spider-Man 2 video game. Yes. That deep, gravelly voice, perfect for the symbiote. He brought this real sense of menace to the character. Right. But also a kind of tortured vulnerability. Yes. Which I think really captures the essence of Venom. It does. And it wasn't just Venom. I mean, he lent his voice to so many projects. Oh, yeah. Call of Duty, Transformers Prime. Transformers. Rise of the Fallen. He was everywhere. He was everywhere. It's incredible. And he just had this incredible ability to imbue his voice with so much emotion and personality. He did. It's no wonder he was so sought after as a voice actor. Yeah. I think it just speaks to his dedication to his craft, you know, to constantly exploring new avenues, challenging himself as an artist. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's incredible to see the sheer breadth of his work. Yeah. I mean, he was constantly working, always bringing something new to the table. And it's clear that he wasn't just in it for the fame, you know? Right. He was a true artist, passionate about his craft. Oh, yeah. Always pushing himself to explore different characters, different genres. And that's what makes his legacy so powerful. I think. Yeah. It's not just about the iconic roles or the impressive filmography. It's about the depth he brought to every character. Right. The humanity he infused into even the most monstrous figures. You know, you keep coming back to that quote of his. Yeah. About finding sympathy for every character. It's such a powerful idea. It is. And it wasn't just an acting technique. It was a philosophy. It really resonated in his work and his life. Absolutely. It's true. That quote really stuck with me, too. And, yeah. And it makes you think about how we perceive others. Right. Especially those who might seem different or even frightening at first glance. You know, we tend to judge people based on appearances. We do. But Tony Todd challenged us to look deeper, to see the complexities of the vulnerabilities in everyone. And I think that's a powerful message that transcends the world of entertainment. Absolutely. It's a lesson we can all take to heart. It is. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the life and career of Tony Todd, yeah, I want to leave you with this thought. How can we apply that idea of finding sympathy of understanding to our own lives? That's a great question. How can we challenge our own assumptions and look for the humanity in everyone we encounter? It's a challenge for sure, but I think it's one worth embracing. I agree. And who knows, maybe it'll lead us to discover some hidden depths within ourselves as well. That's a beautiful thought. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of Tony Todd. It was my pleasure. Until next time.